We are in a race between education and catastrophe. Righteous, you say Jedi. Yes, I was raised Muslim. And, um, you know, I, I never had any problem being a Muslim. It, like I said, always felt natural uh, to my soul. It's not in conflict with anything about me at all since I was a child. Even the first time I did fasted for Ramadan, it was nothing, you know. When I was 17, you know, I was on my own and, but I, I grew up so sheltered, you know, I'm still, the effects of that are still on me. There's certain situations and things that I'm confronted with in life that I know I just don't do well with because I just don't have any reference, you know, I was very sheltered for all Michael and Janet with it. We were very sheltered. No, you didn't have to set your ass down, set your ass down. And certainly by the time I got to college, cause I graduated high school when I was 17 and I didn't take a year off. I went immediately to college in September. That's the first time I even began to imagine, because you know, when you go to college, you don't, you don't have to have a note to get out of class and shit. You can just like, I'm out, I'm going to the beach, you know? And, and I did. I was starting to claim my own independence. Like, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And I knew that I had a deficit, that there was things I didn't know and I needed to experience and you know, I, I wanted to experience girls and know how do girls respond to me. And because I was starting to get some attention, you know, like all growing up and through school and stuff like that, I was just a bookworm, a nerd. I don't no need for me to make friends or anything like that because I live behind the Iron Curtain, essentially. So when I now at 17, I'm, I graduate high school, I'm starting to do my own thing. I've been working since the 15, I've saved a little bit of money. And um, I needed to experience the world for myself, you know? And, and I did that. And that's when I, you know, started really exploring my talents as a singer, as a choreographer. But then there was also a bell that rang in me because I've always been I've always had that talk with that fear of God, you know, and knowing that God knows everything that I'm, that I do, you know, so I never would get out of hand, but that's the first time I could experience parties and see that and what all that meant. And it's just a lot of things that were revelation to me because I didn't know anything about anything about anything. That's why I talk so highly even about the sister that I lost my virginity to because she was an angel. She was more worldly than me, but that's not saying a lot because everybody was more worldly than me, even if they were a nun. And, but she, I guess, I guess God just gave her something, you know, and she was so, she made it a beautiful thing for me, you know, um, because she was patient and she understood what I didn't know I didn't understand. And that's why I was able to look back later and go, wow, she really did something for me, you know. Cheryl Reed, Chocolate Drop. You know, I needed to experience that. I needed to, um, and I also needed to, to take the time to study other religions because I've never been the type of person that because I believe something, I can't know anything about what you do because that infringes on my shit. I don't give a fuck. I'm a fortress of solitude and you will not be breaking my will. I could be in a crack house. It don't matter. I don't do crack. This is nothing. So it's the same thing. I can, I can, I can expose myself to other religions and it's no threat to me at all.
but I am there with an open mind because maybe something happens. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And that's how you attain wisdom and knowledge. And you can be, you can sit more seated in what you know is when you, you're happy to challenge and change whatever it is. My bulletproof field just becomes stronger. And um, so I need to take to experience and study other religions, even though Islam was the truth to me. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe. And my grandmother was a Christian. She acknowledged Islam, but she just couldn't get past Jesus not being the son of God. Just couldn't get there. Just could not get there. Yeah, man, I needed to go and do some dirt. In college, me and my friend Donna, we robbed a Domino's pizza. There's some other stuff we did. That'll be in the book. <laughs> I needed to know the world in which I lived. You know, all the things I've been sheltered for. I wanted to sometimes just been, I just stay up light, late just watching television just because I, I couldn't watch television growing up. You know, if I was at my grandmother's house, we could watch television, you know, but because my parents weren't there, but couldn't watch television. Just a lot of simple stuff that I wanted to do, just simple stuff, you know, um, and just, it didn't take a lot because I couldn't do anything growing up. So that's one half of it. Yes, I grew up Muslim. I'm Muslim today because Islam is the truth. There's, it's not even up for question. It's just up for learning for anyone who doesn't accept or know that. You know, Islam is the way of life for humanity, certainly for African people. We don't even use the word religion because do you call the handbook to your car, the driver's manual, a religion? You go, no, this is the owner's manual. Just tell me everything about my car. The windshield wipers, the radio, the tire, it tells you everything. This is the manual. Islam is the manual. Christianity doesn't offer a way of life. Islam is your instruction from day to night, from birth to death. Everything has been addressed by the one who created you. Everything from your diet to how you treat people, to how your will is supposed to be written, to how you're supposed to handle conflict, to how you're supposed to do raise children, what the order of your inheritance is when you die. It's all there. Do you think God would put us here and not give us a, a owner's manual? Well, he did. And there's many that know that outside of the 1.9 billion Muslims that are on the earth. There's others who know. Do you understand? But they don't want to give up the ways of this world. I'm a regular human being. You can have a lot of fun around me and you can still be a Muslim. It's not in conflict. Do you understand? I won't be drugging. I won't be drinking. I won't be sexing. If you ain't my woman, I can't smash you out. You feel me? Although there has been some moments of weakness that I can't get into. Those of you in the book. <laughs> just in all transparency. Um, but it's just a lot of things I can't do. I I'm just not a bad person, man. You know, even my venom and my hatred for white people is because they are hate worthy. That's it. Don't start none, won't be none. You know, so that comes from a place of righteous indignation and anger and frustration and 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 wishing all things bad upon them, etc. But I'm the one of the kindest people that I know. The last part of it was, um, you said, what was the um, defining moment? Even though I'm, I, I've been exposed to Islam since I was a child, I can tell you a defining moment was when I began looking at other religions. That's why I speak so firmly against Christianity for our people now, because I can put my hand on my King James Bible right now. Receipt, do you understand? And it's obviously worn and it's not just like a showpiece. Do you understand? I, I know this book. I know it. I know it. Now, can I quote Ephesians and all that just on site for you? No, but I have a working understanding of the key points of Christianity and where to cite things here in this thing. And this is the one that's held up by all of Christendom. And this guy was a faggot. Do you understand? And then when you tell Christians that, well, well, it's inspired. Really, bitch? Because if I owe you $20, I'm just going to give you a copper penny that was inspired by a $20 bill. It's inspired. You're never going to accept that. You would never accept that. Never. Or anything else. But this is okay. Your very salvation 
the question mark of where you're going after this life and you just, it's inspired, that's enough for you? You're that cheap? That wasn't good enough for me. That wasn't good enough for me. And keeping with the defining moment, when I ask questions, nobody can give me a firm, unequivocal answer. And there are things you just can't get around with Christianity. You just cannot. Even if you don't want to be religious, you want to be an atheist, that's fine. You're better off, actually. Because at least you're saying, not that. And then you're, you're at least open to something else. Do you understand? You know, one of them, I got a million of them. And I've done videos. They're here on the channel. Or they're on my other channel, The Jedi. First of all, the whole New Testament is out. Because once Jesus comes and says, think not that I've come to change a single striking on a letter of the law. I come to confirm that which was before me. Remember, there's thousands of prophets before him, all with the same message. He's coming to put the Israelites back on track. He was sent only to us, only to us by his own words. I was sent only to the lost tribes of the house of Israel. That's every Christian scholar agrees. Those are the words of, of this man. So you can't have that and then have a New Testament. Either this is a lie or he lied. Which one? Because you don't want to say, well, Christ lied. You're never going to say that. But then you don't get to cling to this book and say this is the truth. There's a clear lie. Either this is a lie or Jesus lied. Which one? You you, you got to pick a lie. Which, which one you want? You, you see, you can't get around that. You can't. Then when they claim that... Um, when, it, when it's talking clear about a prophet, but again, you have it in English. If you even read the Aramaic, you would understand more about this thing than you understand in English. You're never going to understand, you don't understand anything in English. It's the worst language to try and translate something holy in. And this isn't even, is even a translation. A translation is, I said, come here, ben aquí. Spanish, ben aquí, come here. That's a direct translation. Version is ben aquí, and you say, what's your mama doing? That's not the same thing, but that's what they're passing off. And Christians are too ignorant to even understand the basis of, ling of linguistics and etymology. So it's, it becomes a, just even a question of just basic ignorance for me, for even get to philosophy and divinity and all that. It's just, you're a dumb bitch. There's that. And then anytime that it's clearly talking about a prophet, even when it says the word prophet, they change it into Holy Spirit. I just don't have time for people that don't have time for the truth. It's not about a team for me. If this was the truth, I'd be sitting up here singing the praise of Christianity. Because I'm not interested in me. I'm interested in what is the damn truth. And there's no doubt from a sane mind, Islam is the truth. Period. And not only that, there are things, this isn't, nothing about this is coming true. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But yet I could sit here for the next hour and story for you things uttered in the Quran and by the prophet in the sixth century that are still coming to, to this day. Do you, know, do you understand that I sit here in 2023? We've, been, we've known for nearly 1500 years that the Sahara is going to be green and lush with rivers and all that. We know that as Muslims, the prophet uttered it in the sixth century and here in John 16 and in John 14 and 15 and Deuteronomy 18, 18. And I shall raise up from among them a prophet like unto you, Moses, from their brethren. When the divine speaks, it's not some pastor's interpretation. It's Christians that make it say some shit that's not even on their very own page. When God speaks, he means exactly what he said. There's nothing, it's not but what he really means. That's the first thing some of uh, uh, Dumbass Christian's mouth. What he really saying? No, if you have to say that, then that's not the word of God. It's just not. Because when your mama speak, you know that's what she meant. You don't ever, your mama won't say nothing. You go, what she really meant. No, you know your mama meant exactly what she said, and you need to get it together. So why do you not put the same premium on the divine? Why? Why? The disrespect of God that goes on in this damn thing is just beyond. So when he says, I'll raise up a prophet from among them like unto you, Moses, from their brethren, he means that. From their brethren, just like you. When you put the resume of Moses and Muhammad next to each other, you cannot tell who's who unless I tell you the name. Period. Their lives are almost identical. Like unto you, Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth. And anyone who does not heed the words that I put in his mouth, I shall deal with them harshly. That's Deuteronomy 18, 18, 18, John 16. 
and he will speak only that he will not speak of himself he will speak only that which he has heard muhammad does not speak of himself and we only say bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim when we say anything about the prophet or certainly the quran because that's what the prophet did he always said in the name of god the beneficent the merciful he will speak in my name john 16 he will speak in the name of the father bismillah in the name of allah not listen to me muhammad or pastor dusty it's right there then when you have the baptism which is a conflict of everything because if Jesus is God, then baptism is an act of, of purification and cleansing. And if you're God, you're kind of pure and don't need any cleansing. You're not understanding why there's a baptism going on. Uh, and then also in that moment, in the story that's told in this piece of crap, is that the dove, which is the Holy Spirit, is right there. Jesus is there being baptized. And then we hear the Father saying, this is my son with whom I am pleased. So we got all three of them in the same place at the same time. Ah, got you. Where's Jessica Fletcher when you need her? So that's three, not one. One is a bird, one is a man, one is the divine. Huh? So when you come to these places in the scripture where it's clearly talking about the prophet, a man, even in John 16, when Jesus says, Verily, there are things that I want to say to you, but ye cannot bear them now. I must go so that he can, not it. It just makes me sick. Christians are a riddle, dude. A riddle. And it tells you something about your intellectual growth and development if, you, if, you, if you've not even questioned it. It's one thing to be a Christian because you don't know and you just innocently um, believe it because you don't have the intellectual property to challenge it. That's one thing. That's vastly different from the person who is just not even questioning it at all. And then is now going to try to defend what they don't even understand. Like, I can't with that. That's just intellectually lazy. Whatever you're going to be in life, I always say this, whatever it is, you should know that. Whatever that is, know that. So the defining moment for me was challenging Christianity. Now, I got a million of them. But challenging it, it can't stand up to basic, even if I was a Christian, I know nothing about Islam or anything else. I'm a questioning person. I'm intellectually curious. So if I just question that, it does not stand up to scrutiny. It don't. It don't. Then before you even get to all of the contradictions that are in it. But its foundation is Christ has to die for your pathetic ass. If I gave birth to you, I'm your mama. I tell you what to do. I don't need to throw myself in traffic and I told you what you need to be doing. I'm going to beat your ass when you get home. God gives you life every day, puts a heart in your chest that's beating right now and you're breathing. That's not good enough for your bitch ass. I gave you life, but now I got to come and die for you some type of way. Make myself a whole man and come down from my throne and sequester myself in a lowly man and shit and defecate and have morning erections and have desire and anger and all this other shit for your bitch ass. I doubt it. When Allah decrees anything, he says to it only be, and it is. And he's told us his message from the beginning of time to me is do what I tell you. And if you don't, it's a pro it's going to be a problem at the end. Not I need to come down and praise riddle games and ooh, who do you say I am? And who do you say? And ooh, buy a vow. Nah, it does not stand up. This is a bunch of crap. I have more respect for a Christian who just goes with the Old Testament. At least that's the law. It's still some bullshit, but at least you tried. But you can't have a New Testament because Jesus said he didn't come to change anything. So you can't have him. And then when he says to the disciples, I must go and you will see me no more. Because he's saying Muhammad has to come. That's why you don't know the book of St. Barnabas and the Gospel of St. Thomas because they read like the Quran and what I'm telling you right now. So we can't have that. Quick, take those books out. So he's telling you. It ain't shit else. Then would have believed that on a vision, no less. So I can just show up at Oprah's house tomorrow and go, I had a vision you gave me your, your ATM uh, pin number. So let me have it. Get, tell Gail to come give it to me because I had a vision. They're going to have me in county jail within 10 minutes. But we're to believe that a man who killed people of faith, this Paul sissy, that Jesus appeared to him. He wasn't even one of his disciples or followers. Paul never ate with him, never met him, never slept with him, never ate with him, never prayed with him, never talked to him, never nothing. But most Christians don't study their history of their religion and therefore their book. 
So you can just tell them anything and go, that's the Bible. And they believe it. And all of them reads different. So there's that too, because none of them are any original language at all. So you just make shit up as you go. I'm over it. So he appears to this murderer of people of faith and gives him a whole new gospel that, by the way, voids the law. When the first quotes that the Christians have from him is, think not that I come to change even a striking on a letter of the law. Think not. Like, don't, like, make no mistake type thing. So he's a liar. Because, see, in the Old Testament, you can't, women can't wear the same shit as men, and vice versa. And you can't even touch the flesh of pork. So you're not having no ham sandwiches, no more bacon anymore. That's out. Do you understand? But the whole New Testament throws all of that out, and you can just live a godless fucking life and wreck all of humanity for everybody else. Because you have no relationship with God at all. And you think you got to go to somebody else instead of going directly to the one that created you and saying, my Lord, tell me, give me, do whatever. There are no intercessors. None. Jesus himself never declared, never claims divinity at all. There's not a place in the Bible. The word Trinity doesn't appear in any, any one of the 534 versions of the Bible. That's a fact. I got a whole video on my other channel, The Jedi about the Trinity. The word doesn't appear in any single Bible on planet Earth. There is no Trinity. There is none. That, but that's a major thing, of major claim of Christianity. Why isn't the word Trinity in the book then? Why isn't it? Why? 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 That's like you're going to go to a function, a red tie event, and Oprah's going to be there, but we don't see her name anywhere on the fucking program. And, but the whole thing is for Oprah, but I don't see her name here. And it's $5,000 a plate at this bitch. So I'm going to need Oprah's name before I pay my $5,000. I'm just going to need that. You understand what I'm telling you? I mean, don't get me started. So the moment for me was nothing else could stand up to the scrutiny. And while not standing up to it, it couldn't even defend its own shit. So Christianity is not an option. It's also a business. Every church you go into, you got to give money the whole damn time you're there. Christianity is a dead end. The last thing I'll say on it is that real Christians, but not just real, not real Christians, real people of faith who are really seeking the truth. There are many videos of them and I brought you some in mashups on my other channel of Christians who tell their own story of how they became Muslim. Somebody who's Christian, if it's the difference between a Christian and a person of faith. If you're a person of faith and you're seeking the truth, it doesn't matter what somebody comes up and tells you. If you hear the truth, you're going to acknowledge that. If you're just a fucking Christian, then you're just there to contest and to try to deny anything that's being told. When in your own scripture, it's telling you about the very false prophets that is that Christianity is infested with now. Jesus didn't say that... Um, he wasn't talking about, he wasn't just talking about false prophets. He was saying people that just weren't a prophet at all, period. But he's not saying there weren't going to be any more prophets at all. He spoke of the one that was coming after him. That's why he had to go. He even says in John 16, I have to go so he can come. If I don't go, he can't come. I got to go. Peace out. You feel me? And then he paid my, my little $5 and he was out. I was there. Just, I was there. And stuff. If you're interested in the truth, you become Muslim. If you're just inter interested in being on a team or just doing something because that's all you've known your whole life. I don't know what to tell you.